Hey everyone, welcome to part 77 of my Pokemon game series in Unity. So in this video, we'll implement NPCs that can heal Pokemon. So if I look at my party, you can see that one of my Pokemon has taken some damage. So if we go speak to this NPC, he will heal all the Pokemon in our party. Alright, so now if we check our party again, you can see that this Pokemon has been healed. So, let's look at how to implement this. And by the way, I have posted a tutorial for double battles on Patreon last week. So if you are a Patreon, be sure to check that out. I'll put a link to it in the description. And before we start, I want to thank all the Patreons that are currently supporting the channel. You guys make this series possible and I'm really grateful to all of you. Alright, so let's start the video. So first, I'll add the script for hailing the Pokemons. So in scripts, inside the character folder, I'll create a new script called healer. Alright, so we'll attach the script to NPCs that can heal the player's Pokemon. So let's go ahead and create such an NPC. Alright, so I'll open up the house one scene. So here we already have an NPC. So this is the NPC that gives us our first Pokemon. So I'll name this NPC something like Professor. And then I'll duplicate this NPC to create another one called Healer. Okay. So this NPC should be able to heal our Pokemon. So we don't want the Pokemon Giver script in this NPC. So I'll go ahead and remove that. And I'll add the Healer script. Alright. And then in the NPC Controller script, we don't want this NPC to complete any quest. So I'll change the quest to complete to none. Alright. And then I'll also change the dialogue to something that fits the current context. So I'll say something like, you look tired, please take some rest. Alright. So we have created our healer NPC. So let me go ahead and disable the professor NPC for now. Okay. And let me go ahead and implement the healer script. So let me get rid of the default code. So this script will have a public function called heal. Alright. So this function will be a coroutine. And in the input, it will take the player's transform. And it will also take the dialog that we defined in the NPC controller. Okay. So we'll pass the dialog that is defined in the NPC controller when we call this function. So in this function, first we'll show the dialog. So I'll call dialog manager dot instance dot show dialog and I'll pass the dialog. Alright, and since this is a coroutine, I'll add heal return at the start. Okay, so after showing the dialog, we should heal the player's party. Right, so we can get the player's party by calling player.get component Pokemon party. Alright, so let me actually store this into a variable. Alright. And then we should heal all the Pokemons in the player's party. Right. So inside the Pokemon class, we should create a function to heal the Pokemon. So here, I'll create a public function called heal and inside this function I'll set the HP of the Pokemon 
back to the max HP. All right, so this will heal the Pokemon. And then we'll also call the on HP changed event. So this will make sure to update things in case we are showing the Pokemon's HP in any HUD. All right. So now from the healer script, we should call the heal function for each Pokemon. So I'll use the for each function for that. All right. So for each Pokemon, I'll call the heal function. So this should heal all the Pokemons in the party. So after healing all the Pokemon, we should invoke the on updated event in the Pokemon party script. So this event will update the data of the Pokemon in the party screen. So when we change the HP, we should make sure to invoke this event. But there's a problem. Since this is an event, we'll only be able to invoke this event from inside the script. All right, we won't be able to invoke that event from here. So what I'll do is I'll create another public function that can be used for invoking this event. All right. So let me create a public function called party updated. Okay, and in this function, I'll invoke the on updated event. So now to update the party screen from the healer script, we can simply call the party updated function that we just created. All right, so that's all we need to do in this function. So next, Let's call this function from the NPC controller script. So in this script, first we should get a reference to the healer component if it is attached to the NPC. So let me define an object for it over here. All right. And I'll cache reference to it from the awake function. Okay. So now, when we interact with an NPC here, I'll also add another condition that will check if the NPC has a healer component. All right. So if it has a healer component, then we can just call healer.heal function. Okay. So to this function, we have to pass the transform of the player and the dialogue. So here, the initiator of the interaction will be the player. So we can pass that as the transform of the player. And then I'll just pass the dialogue as the second parameter. Okay. So since this is a coroutine, I'll add yield return at the start. All right, so now when we interact with an NPC and if the NPC has a healer script attached to it, then we should heal all the Pokemon in the player's party, right? So let's go ahead and test this. So let me open up the gameplay scene. All right, so right now all my Pokemon has full HP. So let me start a battle and take some damage so that we can test healing. So I'll speed this up. All right. So now my Charmander has lost some HP. So let's try healing now. And by the way, before I heal, I'll just save the game just so that we don't have to start a battle and take some damage every time we want to test healing. Okay. So let's go ahead and talk to this NPC and try healing our Pokemon. All right. So after the dialogue, our Pokemon should be healed. Okay. So you can see that the HP of our Charmander has been restored. So the healing is working fine. 
all right so next i want to add a simple fade in and fade out when we heal our pokemon just to indicate that some time has passed so we can easily do that since we have already created a fader that we used while switching the scenes so if you open up the fader script we can simply call the fade in and fade out functions to achieve the fade in and fade out fx all right so from the heal function first i'll fade in by calling fader dot instance dot fade in function okay so we haven't made the fader class singleton yet so we can't access the instance like this so let's go ahead and make it a singleton so here i'll create a public static instance all right and from the awake i'll assign the instance okay so now from here we can call fader dot i dot fade in function to fade in and let's say we want to fade in 0.5 seconds okay and i'll also add a yield return at the start since it's a coroutine okay so this will fade in in 0.5 seconds and after we heal the party I'll call the fade out function and I'll also fade out in 0.5 seconds. Okay, so let's go ahead and test if this is working. So, first I'll load the game so that our Charmander. Okay, so looks like we have a bug in the party screen when we load the game. So, let me just pause the video and figure out what the bug is. Alright, so I found what's causing the bug. So it's this piece of code that we added in the previous video. So this code is supposed to increase the HP of the Pokemon when we level up or when the Pokemon evolves. But the problem is, it'll cause an issue when we load the game and call calculate stats for the first time. Alright, so when we call calculate stats for the first time, the max HP won't be calculated yet, so its value will be zero and it'll mess up this whole calculation. Right? So to fix this, what we can do is we can avoid this calculation if the old max HP is zero. Alright? We should actually check if it's not equal to zero, and only then we should execute this line of code. Okay? So that should fix the issue for us. So let's go ahead and try loading the game now. Okay. And let me open up the party screen. So now you can see that the HP has been restored correctly. So that bug is fixed. Okay. So let's go ahead and test healing now. All right. So now when we heal, the screen should fade in and fade out. So let's check if that's happening. All right. So you can see that after the dialog, it did fade in and fade out. So that's working fine. So I'll stop the video here. If you think these videos are helpful, please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel. That'll really help me out. So I'll see you in the next video.